And like with religion, how so many cultures have religion, there are societies that have beliefs that are universal. Uh, in some of my research, I've noticed there are several mythical creatures or stories that have appeared across many different races and countries. Um, there is, of course, dragons, which appear in the mythologies from many different societies, which were separate for a good deal of time. You have um, Quetzalcoatl of the Aztecs, you have, you know, Chinese and Japanese dragons, you have the European dragons. All of these societies had dragons, though their concept of dragons is somewhat different. They're similar enough that one must give pause and wonder exactly how did this mythology that's very similar form among very different cultures? Is it because we as humans have a similar way of thinking and so we ultimately create somewhat similar things, much like how um, in my religious studies I've noticed that some of the teachings of Jesus mirror very strongly some of the teachings of Buddha. You know, maybe it's just an innate similarity between human thought, but at the same time, one must question, you know, is there something there? We can't say what, specifically, and, but something, even if it's nothing. There's, I guess you could say, we have this, I don't know, innate need for something, and back to my digressing to the point I was making, uh, there's also a couple other legends, unicorns, for example. Um, you have English unicorns, you have the uh, Asian uh, Kirin or Kylan. Uh, yeah, my pronunciation sucks, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, and those have served various purposes for each culture, uh, similar to how I was discussing about laws. Something like unicorns is yet another myth that held a purpose of serving a law, since it tied in with the unicorn myth that only um, a virgin could see or get close to a unicorn, it was an encouragement for young maidens of that era to remain virgins until they were to be married. And yet again, you have it as a control on society. Um, and there's also one group of legends that spread out among quite a number of cultures. Um, it's in, I think, Ireland is the legend of the Selkies, uh, people who turn into, I believe, sea otters uh, and occasionally emerge on the shore in human form. And they leave, when they emerge in human form, they have an object they leave, in this case, a pelt. And there are similar legends in other cultures. In Japanese, bleh, Japan, there's the Tenyo legend in which celestial maidens will come down from heaven and will leave their celestial robes. Um, there's, I think, a Russian myth about a white cat that's very similar. And so all these cultures have a very similar mythology, and I think that ties in with how we have this extreme need to have something to believe in, both religiously and mythologically. And I think that it, it really is something that is innately human. We have a desire to create, we have a desire to control, and religion serves both those purposes. Um, I can't say for certain whether or not, you know, religious beliefs are real or not. And I still haven't I guess you could say the jury is still out with me on that, though I have some beliefs. I don't have a concrete religion that I say this is what I believe in specifically. I tend to um, keep an open mind to various philosophies because I think there's always room for more further education and further deeper thought on that. Um, as far as religion in my current culture, I think that it really, um, how to say this, 
Well, government-wise, unfortunately, you know, no offense meant to Christians, but unfortunately, the U.S. government is ran by Christianity, despite the fact that there is a statement of separation of church and state, and I think that, you know, yet again, it's, it's a source of control. It's, it's a basis that we've formed a lot of laws and other concepts around, and I think that, you know, in my personal opinion, having a fixed religion that's representative of a country isn't really a good idea, because I think everyone is entitled to their beliefs. Everyone has a right to believe, and mandating a country as being one religion, you know, isn't fair to everyone else, because there are all these other people in the world who exist, and by limiting them, you're cutting off their fundamental rights as a human being to believe in something. You know, enforcing, you know, everyone has a right to believe in something, not a right to enforce that belief on others. And, um, yeah, so I guess, I guess the biggest point that I've come across as far as the purpose is control and to fulfill the human need to explain anything that we can't find a reasonable explanation for, if we can't put down ineffable empirical evidence, you know, in some scientific form, then we need to have religion to give us something to answer the question of, well, okay, if we can't explain it, then what the heck is it? You know, how, how do we classify that? And in, in all of humanity, we have a need to classify things. It's like um, time and age, all these things. We label everything. Everything has to have a label and an explanation. Otherwise, we are completely uncomfortable with it. And I think that is one of the main reasons that religion really exists, is because we do have this need to label. And, let's see, how much time is this? Uh, this is getting pretty long. We have to break this into two pieces as it is, so I'm going to cut this here. And thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you uh, found my thoughts on the question of the purpose of religion interesting.